and welcome to a small tutorial on um, how to make a splatter scatter effect in Photoshop. So for this tutorial I have decided to use a generic stock image in order for you guys to be able to download the same source material that I use here. So um, uh, please go to deviantart.com and find face stock or you can simply just follow the links that I have provided in the video description. So Facebook is a very talented young lady that has uh, provided a lot of uh, free stock uh, model images um, that you can use for non-commercial purposes. So this is one of them and I rather like this pose. It's very dynamic and has a lot of nice colors to it. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to simply change the dimensions of the image because if we create a scatter effect to the left of her well, as the image is now, there is not much space for the scatter effect to be seen. So simply press C. So you go to your crop tool and drag out until you you think you're you're happy. Rather too much than too little, yeah. So uh, we're also going to want a little more above and below. So I'm holding down my Alt key while I drag, which creates this uh, thing that it. Um, that it changes the size bo in, in both directions um, vertically, like this. And when you're happy, you just press OK uh, by pressing Enter. So, um, yeah, this is the image that I have so far now. Um, well, create a new layer, Control Shift N, and call it Background, and put it down here. Uh, let's make it white for now. Uh, we'll change that later. So um, we, we call this layer model. Uh, I highly recommend you to name your layers uh, as you go because all of a sudden you will sit with a very big project and if you have not named any of the layers, they're just called layer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1000, then you're going to be very uh, confused once you return to your project and wants to 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 do something to one specific layer if they are not named. So for now we have to we have to uh, extract the girl from the background. Uh, I'm going to do it the very fast way, the very sloppy way. I'm just going to press W to uh, select my quick selection tool. I'm going to ensure that Add to Selection has been chosen, and simply pressing the left mouse button while I drag around on the parts that I want to keep, meaning her. Um, and if it takes in too much, you simply press down the Alt key and then press in the area that was selected that was too much and then you return to to select like this. This is not a great selection. Uh, it doesn't need to be. This is just a tutorial for you guys. So um, let's go to Refine Edge. You can either press this button up here. You could take it from uh, Select Refine Edge uh, here, or you could simply use the shortcut button, which I always recommend that you do. Alt Control R. So um, I have changed my view to view it instead of uh, on white. I, I choose to view it on black because uh, the the image is on a white background, is isolated on a white background as is. So we will not be able to see how well our selection works unless we choose another color. So I just choose black. Um, change the radius to something that makes sense. Uh, let me see. I will check mine up to 18 this time. Then with your uh, left mouse button you just click on troublesome areas like for example the hair. You almost always need to redo the hair like this uh, with this tool. And you do like this. And well, it's not great, but um, but it's fine. So um, I've chosen to output to selection. That's fine. We press OK. And our selection is here, so we simply press to add to layer mask like this. So let's do something about that background color. I will press I to choose my color dropping tool, this one. That is the shortcut key I, the eye dropper tool. And I will press two different areas, one of the darker areas on her boots, and then I press, you can see it's selected here now when I when I click. Uh, I can press X to swap my front and uh, or foreground and background color, and then I press somewhere else. So now I have two different colors chosen. 
Once I've done that, I grab my gradient tool and simply draw a quick gradient. Uh, let me just redo the colors that I've chosen to something a little darker. And let's redo the gradient. So I think we're just going to go with this for this tutorial. Uh, it's not really important how, how great it looks. Um, and as you can see, there's plenty of room for you to improve upon this, uh, to do more about the, um, the edges of this selection. It's not really important on the left side of her. We're going to trash that area anyway. But um, especially here around the fingers, you should uh, make the e extraction more precise. You can simply grab your ordinary brush button. I just press B for brush. And then you have black and white selected. So whenever you draw with white, it's going to get a little bit of the stuff back that you initially um, removed. So like this. Now here I'm just using mouse. I will of course recommend that you use uh, a Wacom digitizer. I have my Wacom digitizer here also, but I don't want to freak people out who don't have one. So for now I'm just going to stick with my mouse. Whoop. And I'm not very used to that. I'm using my Wacom uh, Intuos all the time. So this is not what this tutorial is about, so I won't make a lot of fuss. Uh, by, uh, by spending a lot of time doing this. So let's just zoom back and let's right click and convert it to a smart object. When we have converted it to a smart object, the nice thing is that we can manipulate around for the girl only without the underlying layers being affected. We can also resize her uh, down and back up again without any quality being lost. So um, let's enter by just, double -clicking, uh, by just double clicking, let me show you that again. Uh, I just double click on the, uh, my smart object and then I enter the model.psp file. Uh, once I've done that, I will create a quick gradient map and the gradient I will change to black and white. So now we have a black and white image. This is not the way to convert any image to black and white, folks. Uh, there are better tools for that if you want to go black and white. But um, again, this is not what this tutorial is about. So my purpose with this is I will just quickly choose Overlay. And I will change my opacity to 25, 35. Yeah, to create something that is a little more appealing uh, for that scatter effect. Well, in here you can you, you can do a lot of stuff. You can um, manipulate the model any way you like. And as I said, the layers will not affect the underlying layer in your primary file. Um, I will just quickly select all skin areas because I don't like the skin tone uh, of that image. So um, let me just quickly do like this. And that arm is also skin. And... I will deselect. So I use my quick selection tool again. I select the areas. If there is too much selected, I will hold down my Alt key while I drag into the area. Um, this is a basic beginner's technique for extracting something. Uh, so I won't uh, explain too much about how it works in this tutorial. I have done that in some of my other tutorials. Um, but it really is very simple to use. So once you've done that, you want to refine edge and simply give it a small feather, so like this. And yeah, go down and choose your hue saturation in the beginning uh, to begin with. And you can see when, whenever I, I do something, it's only her skin that's affected now, the areas that we selected. So I'm not going to do anything very drastic. I'm simply going to chug up the saturation a bit chuck down the lightness a little so we end up with a little more appealing skin tone then i control uh, hold down control while i click this uh, layer and um, i will go to um, photo filter here and i will change the hue to something a little more pinkish like this and let's see without and with. So let's do like this. So now she looks like a <laughs> pig. Um, so let's change the uh, layer blending setting. Again, I choose overlay 
and I chuck down the opacity to something like this. So it seems like her face has become a little too a little too a little too dark. So let's just quickly choose her face. Uh, whoop, remember to stand on your model layer while you do this. So quickly choose her face only and deselect the hair. And then once again, you quickly uh, make a light feather. Again, we don't need to be too precise on this. This is uh, whoop, this is not what this tutorial is about. Um, so make a quick curve and lighten that face up. Yeah, once you're happy with whatever you're doing in here, um, save your changes, file save, or you can press Control S, the shortcut for save. And as you do this, this um, smart object will be updated over here. Note that in the history it says update smart object. If you want to go back, you do like this. So here you can see the changes before and after. Um, now comes the interesting part. So let's make a duplicate of our model layer. Let's drag it down here and call it scatter. Uh, this will refer to the same object as this one, which will uh, probably give me some uh, problems later on. You can choose it this way, but if I double click here, it will enter model.psb just as if I double click here, it will enter the same. So if I if I uh, double click on any of them, I will change the same source, which will cause any changes uh, to, to affect both these layers. I don't want that for now, so I will just create a new dummy layer. I will hold down my control key while I select this one, so both layers are selected. Then I press control E to merge layers. You can also go up here, layer, uh, merge layers, here. So once I have that, I will call it scatter, because it kind of stole that name from the upper layer. Uh, sorry for that. So, and then I will just deform it by pressing Control T and drag out. So this deformation is very important. Um, what you want to do here is to create enough space uh, to make your scatter effect. So for now I'm doing like this and this gap should not be here, so I will go up to um, uh, in my edit menu and I will choose transform and I will choose warp. That is by far the quickest way to uh, to change how this is uh, being done. So I'll just quickly get this back like this and like the skin area, I don't want that to be visible as well, so I will need to pull in this direction and you know, it's, it's it's very easy to use this tool. You just left click and and you drag a bit um, and it becomes like this. So it's virtually impossible to do this perfect all in one take. So don't mess around this for too long. You want this process to be fast. So once you've done that, you simply press enter and you wait a little because that scatter effect uh, with this high resolution is going to take a while. And after you've done that, you could go to filter, liquify, and simply pre uh, choose a, a big size for your uh, liquify tool and begin dragging like this. Our goal is not for her to look pretty, obviously. Um, this layer simply will contain uh, all the um, scatter effect. So we drag out like this. And remember, if, if it's not visible, if the layer is not visible there, you will not be able to make any scatter effect there. So um, rather choose a little too much and also remember to choose uh, parts that are above her and below her because if you want the scatter effect to disperse uh, around her a bit then that should be done like this so let's try and press OK for that and let's wait for it to process and 
well, we still have an issue here. So let's uh, re-enter our liquify tool and let's just pull this all the way back like this and like this and like this. Let's try and press OK again. Oh, the issue is still there. So we re-enter our liquify tool. We might have to do this a few times, but it's not all that bad. Uh, you press OK. So here, and now we have the boot area that is still an issue. So let's pull the boot back. Now we have something to guide after, so we can simply do like this. And we will do like this. Yeah, that is nice. So um, now all these uh, now now all this uh, will provide a background for our scatter effect. So give it a mask by simply pressing here, and then fill with black. If black is not chosen as your foreground color, press D and press X. Then hold down your Alt key while you press backspace and all of a sudden it became invisible. So your scatter layer here is ready for drawing some scatter. I am using uh, two brush sets, one called Glossy Blood Splatter and one, call, uh, one called Splatter and Stokes Brush. Um, the, bo both links are available in the video description. So simply press B for choosing your brush tool, right click and then load your brush. As soon as you have downloaded these brushes, uh, you will see an ABR file within the zip file. So of course unzip it and choose the ABR file that you are going to, to use. I'm choosing this one. And as you can see, the new brushes are available here. I will load the other brush as well, called Splatter and Sto uh, Stokes brush. I think there's a spelling error there. It should be Splatter and Strokes, but um, never mind. So let's pull it a bit out and let's take a look at all the new brushes we ha uh, we've gotten. The first brush I want to test out, well, just try and, and, and take a brush and then look at the, how, how, it, um, how the brush looks like uh, by just pulling your mouse out of the uh, brush selection area. And once you're happy, give it a try. Uh, remember to choose white as your foreground color. You can swap by pressing X. I highly recommend that you use these shortcuts instead of going over here and clicking because uh, in a short while we will be doing a lot of uh, work fast and like this. So what you can also do is go in here, resize the brush, resize the direction of the brush and do like this. So don't do like this. This will be too obvious that it's the same brush that's been used. It's not random enough. So go back and let's choose another. And let's choose another. As you can probably see, this is pretty tedious work. Uh, it, it, it takes a while because um, it's a very manual process and, and there's nothing to do about that. So um, this cannot be automized and have the same great result like this. There are actions that uh, can help you uh, if you're really feeling lazy. Um, but I, I recommend that you learn this method first before uh, before you do anything else. And this is really a great um, a great brush. Now I will, yeah. The way I I, I uh, quickly undo what I do if I click outside and I, I'm not happy with the result is just Control Z, or Americans would say Control Z. Uh, well, I say Z then there is no <laughs> then there is no arguing if i mean the letter c as in citrus or if i mean the letter z for zebra so once you're happy with the results which might oh that was the same brush i chose up here so let me just quickly do something about it i can also squish it like this and morph morph it to look even more different um let's take a look at what how this brush will look like. No, I don't like that. So obviously this will take a while. So let's just skip this part where I just sit around here and do this. 
and welcome back. As you can see, I've gone a little further. Uh, nothing new. The method remains the same. So um, I make sure that my scatters, uh, that the brushes I select are smaller out here where the effect ends and they are larger here towards where they meet her. So for now, uh, let's say I'm happy with this result. You should, of course, spend more time doing this properly. Um, let me just create a new layer that I will call Glow. It's going to be placed between the background layer and the model and scatter layer. Uh, for this, I will just quickly press D and X. So I have white selected as my foreground color. I will select my brush, right click to change my brush into something very soft. And let me just do like this. So this is done quickly to create a nice glow and also to hide the fact that I wasn't all too careful when I made my uh, extraction. <laughs> so, um, but it gives a nice focus on the girl as well to take her away from the background. And also it makes the scatter and splatter effect more visible up here. So uh, once I've done that, I want to chuck down the opacity a bit so it's not all that aggressive. Then I'm going to create a new glow layer. So um, let's call it inner glow like this. And let's just select a few fewer parts. So I will chuck down the um, size and I will bend it like this and give it a slight edge like this. So and let's select the leg down here, like that. And this should also have a little lower opacity, like this. So, for now, let's say I'm happy with this result, and let's go to back to our model layer. So, um, press uh, the layer mask icon, so you get a layer mask for her. And then, now, you will need to re-enter your brushes and select a smaller size for your brushes. If you have trouble selecting by using the slider, simply write in the value instead. And remember to do like this. So for now, you should select black as your uh, color. So now we can subtract something from her to create a nicer dispersion effect where, um, where she dissipates into this liquid form. And I will do like this. Whoops, that was a bit too aggressive. And we use a larger one like this. Let's choose this one over here and make it a bit larger. So this is a lot of trial and error. You will need to um, to just click around, uh, not totally aimlessly, because you probably know what you like and what you don't. It has to look nice and randomized and not systemized. So remember to change your brush, to change the size, to change the direction very often. And if the size is too small, don't be afraid to go back and redo it. Um, so basically, this is, um, this is it. And as soon as you are happy with your results, uh, you're finished. So um, I'm just going to quickly wrap up a few more things and whoop, like this. And so this is my final result. Uh, I'm very sure that you can do better, better because uh, given a little more time, this effect can be very intriguing. You can, of course, also choose other brushes to, to play with. There are loads of free brushes on the internet, especially on DeviantArt, which I will highly recommend that you uh, take a search for. So um, that was it for this time. Thanks for watching.